What is your fondest or most satisfying memory about the early history and development of the Association for Play Therapy, APT? Well, that would go back to uh, 1985. In those days, uh, 1985 was the second annual play therapy conference. And in those days, uh, we had a one-day workshop, so one speaker, and I was the speaker in 1985. And I have really fond memories of, about the uh, lunchtime of that day because Charlie Schaefer and I had lunch together in the hotel. And um, we were talking about how to help play therapy grow. And I said to Charlie, uh, we need to take the conference out of New York and move it around the country. And Charlie said, I, I don't have time to do that. And so I said, well, Charlie, if you'll let it come to Texas, I'll run it. And he said, it's yours, take it. So uh, in 1987 then, we had the first uh, play therapy conference outside New York. Most play therapists are aware of your book, Play Therapy, The Art of the Relationship. What key event or experience contributed to the development of your approach? In the first year of my uh, doctoral work, I had a graduate assistantship working in a um, children's center, although my caseload was junior high students, high school students because of my counseling background and parents. And my supervisor, Stan Kaplan, to whom I will forever be indebted, Kathy, uh, sat down with me one day and said, uh, Gary, um, how would you like to consider working with children in play therapy? And I said, I wouldn't. Why? Because I'd never had any experiences with little children. But Stan Kaplan saw some qualities in me that I wasn't even aware of, Kathy. And, uh, that opened the, the door for me to consider that possibility. So I went to the library, checked out books by Virginia Axline and Clark Moustakas and Melanie Klein and Anna Freud, quickly dismissed Melanie Klein and Anna Freud because I was at that point deeply immersed in Carl Rogers' uh, client-centered approach. But I really resonated to what Virginia Axline and Clark Moustakas had to say and uh, Stan Kaplan became my personal mentor in, in play therapy. He was a play therapist and uh, that really, his suggestion changed, literally changed my life, uh, not just professionally but personally because I know uh, I became a different father. What do you consider to be the most important principles of the child-centered play therapy theory? Well, I would have to begin with uh, an unwavering belief in the capacity of the child, the inner directional part of the child that moves toward growth and healing, um, the inner directional part of the child that is cr naturally creative and moves toward a healing process that children are uh, vastly uh, capable of much more than uh, most people tend to give them credit for. That would be the first principle, that unwavering belief in their ability to provide healing for themselves given the right kind of setting or, or in, in play therapy it would be the relationship that provides the setting. The second important principle uh, is a, a, the ability to look through the child's eyes. Um, not to see what other people see, um, but to see what the child sees in his or her world. Uh, to see how the, this child sees himself in relationship to his world and people in his world. If we, um, if we just see what other people see, we never get to know the child. Why did you establish the Center for Play Therapy at the University of North Texas in Denton? And how do you feel about it becoming the model for additional university programs designated by APT as Approved Centers of Play Therapy Education? When I came to the uh, University of North Texas in 1966, uh, play therapy was not very well known. Um, wasn't being used in the public schools, uh, really. Uh, there were only, I think, 42 universities that were offering 
graduate courses in play therapy in the late 60s and early 70s. Um, and looking at that situation, it was obvious that uh, we aren't going to be, under these conditions, we're not going to be training very many play therapists. And so my objective in establishing the Center for Play Therapy was to grow more play therapists, to train more play therapists. And so I um, first organized an annual play therapy conference in October and uh, followed that with uh, an eight-day play therapy conference in the, in the summers uh, to provide training that was not available in uh, graduate programs and other, other universities. Um, and then uh, adding to that, um, there wasn't much research going on in play therapy in those days. Uh, so I established a library of play therapy and my goal in doing that was to house in our library everything that had ever been published in play therapy, and we have been successful in doing that. Uh, in journal, all the journals and all the textbooks and all the videos, DVDs, uh, to provide a place where individuals could come, sit down in this library, and everything they needed to provide a background for dissertation research studies or their uh, their own interests in, in research and we've had many um, scholars from overseas come and study in our center uh, because everything that they need in play therapy is in this one room and they have access to that uh, so that over the years we've now um, conducted um, in excess of 50 research studies uh, on play therapy and filial therapy in our program. We also provided a directory of play therapy training so that people could uh, find a place close to them to get the training in play therapy that they uh, wanted or, or needed. Uh, so those were my objectives, was to bring together everything we could find about training in play therapy, provide training resources, uh, and I think we've largely uh, accomplished that. Um, as to how do I feel about um, that center becoming a model, um, that's been very gratifying that it has become a model. Gratifying because uh, for me it has verified that, oh, you're on the right track. That other people believe this is important to do as well. And so I've been really pleased, uh, honored, that the center uh, has been able to provide uh, a structure that other uh, groups, other universities could follow in organizing what's really needed, and that is more training for play therapists. In your writings, you mention a variety of rules of thumb. Do you have a favorite rule of thumb? If we focus on the problem, we will lose si uh, sight of the child. And all children, every child, is more important than any problem. And yet that tends to often be the focus, isn't it? That uh, this child has a problem, so we begin to focus on the problem and solving the problem. And yet, uh, in many cases, the problem that we know about is not the cause. That is a symptom. And so we attack, so to speak, the solving of the problem, and the cause is still there. Uh, my experience goes counter to that, that uh, children have often been referred to me for problems that parents are concerned about, teachers are concerned about, and in the process of working with the child, I discover there are uh, causes or other deeper-seated problems here that uh, uh, significant adults in the child's life weren't even aware of. Uh, so we need to shift our focus from focusing on the problem to focusing on the child. Please elaborate about why the future of play therapy requires training parents and how such training might occur in the next 10 years. The strength of every uh, society is in their families and the structure of the families and the effectiveness of the 
family structure. If we're going to um, be helpful in changing our society or any in any country, then we have to focus on changing the family or helping the family to become more effective in the parenting that they do. Um, so um, I would uh, I would want to focus on what it is that we can do to provide that structure. And I think Louise Gurney and Bernard Gurney have provided us with the structure for helping to change a society with their development of the filial therapy approach. Um, I consider uh, the work of um, Louise and uh, Bernie uh, to have, and the, the development of filial therapy to have been the most significant um, happening in the mental health field in the last 50 years. Because I see in the structure that they've given us a way to impact an entire society because filial therapy is an intergener becomes an intergenerational process. We train the parents. The parents go home and help their children. Um, and the parent becomes the therapeutic agent. The child grows up with this new way of being parented and they have children and they rear their children in this new way and it gets passed on generation to generation. So uh, in terms of what we can do in the, in the near term in the future, it would be um, It would mean that we should, as play therapists, and perhaps not just play therapists, anyone who works with children, that we should begin focusing on how best to give our skills away. That is the way we change a society, not by hiding our skills behind our office door or the playroom door. What are the major factors impacting the growth and popularization of play therapy among clinicians who work with children? For me, that would be focusing on a broader objective, that we really need to do that. Uh, going, going beyond just what play therapy does, or is, or learning about it, um, but that we need to, f we need to focus on a, a, an objective, a broader objective, and that broader objective is bigger than we are. That um, play therapists, APT as the leadership in the play therapy field, um, would begin to focus on this broader objective, which is our society, and changing our society to become more productive than it is. Um, and in that way, we become a part of something bigger than we are. Um, I think um, I think if we did that, we would also become more creative in our approach to uh, what we're doing in, in play therapy. What metaphor would you use to define the field of play therapy over the last few decades? The field of play therapy has been largely like a developing child. And in the child-centered approach to play therapy, we're always looking, as I mentioned earlier, toward what the child can become, what's this child capable of becoming. Um, and I, th I think I would apply that to the field of play therapy that um, the, we've made significant growth in play therapy and uh, the, uh, the organization of APT has made significant growth. But uh, only, we're only just beginning. We've, we've just begun to tap the potential that's there. We still don't know what the field of play therapy is capable of becoming. Mm -hmm.